this heart for you, my love. There's a place inside this heart, my love, my love, my love, my love, my love, my love, my love. There's a place inside this heart. Uh, I got into the music industry um, because I, I, so basically I came from a more uh, classical history. So I studied um, classical singing at university in Australia. And then I came over to London and I studied musical theatre. Um, so it's actually only been in the last five years that I've actually started um, working in the music industry. Um, and it all came about because I've always written my own music and um, it's always been something that I do, but I never really had the confidence to, um, I guess, pursue it as a real career. And then I had this experience where my marriage visa was refused and I was stuck in Australia. My whole life got put on hold. I was separated from my husband, Nick, for nearly two years. And I think... Um, it made me very aware of what was really important to me and what that is, is being able to express myself. And the way that I express myself is through my music. So yeah, I decided to venture forth. I don't know, that's not a, that's a weird way to say that. Um, but I decided to, to actually start putting my own music out there um, with Nick, um, who's my beautiful husband. And so we write together and um, we perform together and uh, yeah, so that's, that is how, that is how I got into the music industry, I guess. Um, yeah. Yeah, so Ghost, I wrote Ghost um, because of the visa situation that I was in. Um, my marriage visa was refused um, by the Home Office. I had to stay with my parents in Australia and um, it was sort of just a really long period of being completely on hold. Um, I'd done a TV show over here and I I'd, I'd sort of started getting some proper acting work and um, everything just stopped basically. And I, I didn't really have any direction anymore. And I was obviously on the other side of the world from the man I just married. So um, I shut down quite a lot and I got very down. Um, anyone who has been in a visa situation knows the toll it takes on your mental health. Um, and I mean, I know my situation was nothing compared to what some people go to go through, but it was awful and so we were stuck in this kind of limbo and we wrote this song over Skype and it was the first time I'd actually been able to be creative and express how I felt in a really long time and um, Nick actually pointed out the other day it's it's sort of the beginning of the Ebony Buckle music journey starting because that was kind of the first song that we wrote together um, and yeah, it feels really good to actually be releasing it six years later. <laughs> it just took us a little bit of time. Um, yeah. It's really important to me that people connect to my music. Um, this song was written about a very specific thing that happened to me, but I know there are a lot of people out there who go through similar things and, and I really hope it resonates with them because I know I personally use music to kind of um, process or feel things that I don't quite feel like I can express myself, um, if that makes sense. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I think, you know, when you hear a song and it just makes sense to you and it's exactly how you feel, even though you have no idea why the other person had written the song. Um, yeah, and I, I, I really love um, getting feedback from people that, that it meant a lot to them. Um, someone recently said that my coming to one of my shows is like um, stepping into a parallel universe where I've just basically made up 
many many different characters and stories and things and i i love that idea of of having this kind of thing that people can step into and be like oh wow look um mermaids and selkies and and raptors and aliens and also very sad songs about bureaucracy um yeah so uh i think that answered the question <laughs> sorry my brain sometimes powers down for a little bit. Um, but yes, my answer is yes. It's really important for me to be able to connect with people. Um, I've actually just started uh, this year. I started my own Patreon um, platform, which is where everyone, people can subscribe to me monthly and they kind of join this like Ebony Buckle world where um, I share new music and poetry and general thoughts and um, new songs from the album that we're recording. And it, what I really want is to create a community around my music of people who, who like it and, you know, who feel like they can be part of it as well. So I did, um, I think I mentioned earlier, I did a, I did a BBC One drama called Inspector George Gently and I, fa I played this folk singer who died in a, in a car accident in, a, in, the, in the river. Um, I didn't mean to laugh, it wasn't, it was sad. It was very, it was very sad when I died. Um, I played this folk singer and I sang two folk songs in the episode and since then people have been finding me because whenever the show airs they look me up um, because I think the songs are so beautiful. It's Silver Dagger which is a Joan Baez, it's a traditional song but Joan Baez is probably the most famous um, person who performed it and it's a song called Maddie Groves as well and um, yeah I think people really liked it and they found my music and I've got some really wonderful followers. Some people who found my music back then when it aired are actually now some of my patrons and um, yeah, they're, they're great. They're great. Uh, so yeah, I mean that, that, that had a huge effect on, on me getting my music out there. Um, it, it came at the time just before my marriage visa was refused. So it was tricky for me acting wise because it kind of put a stop on any maybe trajectory I would have had. Um, I could have been playing many other musicians who died in in mysterious ways. But um, but yeah, so that's that's been a really fun, that, I mean, it was the most incredible experience. I worked with Roger Lloyd Pack, um, James Norton, uh, Nick Hendricks. So yeah, it was, it was a very special time. So Ghost, the track was recorded, was produced and mastered by my husband, Nick. Um, so it's a very special song for him as well. Um, and yeah, he's a brilliant producer. I know I'm probably biased, but um, I'd like to think that I have enough professional opinion to also think he's amazing um he we have our own studio here at home and so he works as a producer and um and yeah we've been working on this track for so we wrote it about six years ago but we've probably been working on the recording for about four years just like we come back to it and we add things and um it's not felt right to release until now and um yeah, so you can hear all of the backing vocals. Um, some of them are me, but a lot of them are Nick because his voice is so beautiful. You'll hear him singing a line as well, um, but he also did a lot of the BVs. He, the, if you hear one that's like, oh, it's so stunning. And that was all him because we worked out that his breath control is insane compared to mine. So he could just do like take after take of these incredible, um, long held notes uh and then there's some violin on there at the end which i'm proud to say was me um definitely took me a bit longer to record that because i hadn't practiced for a while um so yeah it's all us basically um nick did all the instrumentation and uh yeah that's uh there's some ghost whispering in there i think um and then so then we've got the music video which is which is um which is out and that uh that was 
that was really special to do. So I filmed that with my brother, Finn, who flew over from Australia to film music videos with me, basically. We had two weeks. And we also did Susan, which is my last track, um, where I dress up and with my best friend. I made him dress up as a dinosaur and we danced around London. So it's a very different vibe, but we did this all in the same week. And um, yeah, Ghost is, uh, it's been, if I'm honest, I was, terrified to put it out there and it's probably taken me longer than it needed to because it's very raw and it's very vulnerable and um it's just you know when you look at yourself being emotional and you're kind of like oh do we have to but um it i i, I guess when we filmed it it was kind of like we were reliving that whole time and so the emotions are really genuine. Um, and by the end of the day, it almost felt like we'd been able to let go of the whole experience a little more because it's not just that period that you're, you have that thing happen to you. It's the years after where you try to get your life back and you, and you try to sort of build together again, a life and work out who you are after all of that. Um, <laughs> I sound dramatic, sorry. I'm not, no, I won't apologize. Um, <laughs> this is going well, but yeah, so it was a really emotional day and I'm felt really lucky that Nick was there and that Finn, my brother filmed it cause he'd been there the whole time. So he'd sort of experienced it with me. Um, and yeah, I guess I just wanted to be really honest about what it feels like to be depressed and stuck and feel like the rest of the world is going on without you. Um, because I know a lot of people go through that in their lives and especially at the moment I think the world is kind of in a bit of a holding pattern itself so um yeah I I hope it resonates with some people uh yeah this time is so weird has made me probably the most productive I've I've ever been because I think it's you sort of I, I feel like especially in the first few weeks there was this drive to like okay we've got to share we've got to we've got to do live shows we've got to like just put as much stuff out there and then and then everyone got a bit tired but I feel like now we've kind of found this rhythm where you know um we've worked out a little bit how we need to be online and um I joined this very amazing group called Girls to the Front at the start of this whole lockdown and it was set up by this beautiful woman called Harriet and she runs events um, called The Secret Sessions in London. And um, basically it's it's for mu uh, female musicians and we all get together twice a week on Zoom because who isn't on Zoom now? And we we sort of, we present our work, we show, we, we tell each other, you know, um, we give each other advice, we, we share stories. Um, and we, and then we hear from um, industry professionals come into our Zoom meetings and, and give us so much incredible advice. So it's actually been very motivating. Um, and because of, because I'm doing Patreon, I kind of have no choice but to just keep going because I have, I have stuff I have to do for Patreon. I have to do a live show every month. I have to do a poem every week. I have to, you know, I share all the new songs I've written. So it's made me, I, I'm doing a lot of writing at the moment and I've sort of found my my day I'm getting a little bit more of a routine which is nice where I I do writing in the morning and then sort of I get do my admin I do exercise I do that kind of thing and then in, in the evenings we do recording um because we're also recording an album so it's actually given us both time to sit down and get more tracks recorded um so yeah, I think I think we're definitely making the best of it. Obviously, there are days when I don't want to get out of bed. Um, but uh, yeah, for the most part, I've been really busy, and and um, yeah, I'm very grateful that I've I've got all this stuff going, and I've got my lovely Patreon people, and we've been doing live streams. Um, we had one last week, and we've got one coming up on the twentieth of June. We're going to be working with Choose Love to raise money for them. So yeah, we've got a lot of stuff coming up and I, I go to about two or three kind of seminars every week on different aspects of, of getting your music out there. So uh, yeah, it's it's been a busy time. I'm learning a lot, but I think that's, 
that's good. I think it's good to always learn and try to keep going forward. So please uh, do check out my Patreon. It's not for everyone, but it is a wonderful place. If you want, it's um, patreon.com forward slash Ebony Buckle. Then if you want to check out my website, it's ebonybuckle.com. Facebook, I'm Ebony Buckle Official. Instagram, I'm also Ebony Buckle Official. Um, uh, follow me on Spotify, please. I would love that. It's Ebony Buckle. And... Uh, where else am I? I'm, I'm many places where you expect to find singer-songwriters. I am on Twitter, Ebony Rose Buckle. Uh, I'm not great at Twitter, but I am there. So if you do need to find me, I will, I will find you on Twitter. Um, I think that's about, I think that's about everything. Um, you can join my mailing list if you would like, uh, and you can find that link, um, on my Facebook and also on my website as well. I send out little updates um, about my music, about my gardening, which is a new hobby that I have started. I have been growing vegetables. Um, it's a very exciting time. I've been talking a lot to my vegetables, giving them words of encouragement, and I'm hoping that's helping. Um, <laughs> yeah, wh where else am I? I think that's, I feel like that's everywhere. Um, oh, YouTube. YouTube, Ebony Buckle Official as well. Um, yeah, and that's where we do our live shows and they're really fun. Uh, the sound is excellent because Nick is a sound genius and uh, we also have some pretty jazzy lights and some very exciting outfits if this isn't anything to go by. Um, I like dressing up, so um, yeah. Come for the fashion, stay for the music. I don't know, that's a weird thing. Um, anyway, yes, thank you so much for having me and... Um, yeah, I really appreciate it. Bye. You cannot touch me. There's nothing to believe in. Still I need him every day. And I keep my hope in a jar by the door and I pray.